Okay, my friends, this is the Royal Institution, 933,000 geeks. <laughs> and, and this is Mud Fossil University, 98,000 geeks. And we are going to go against the ro uh, Royal Institution. Again, every single time we have. And every single time they respond back with something that does not you know, well actually they admitted that the bosons that we showed destroy the Bohr theory the Bohr atomic model so that's already done I, that was one year ago they the Royal Institution agreed and everybody did in physics that the Bohr model is wrong and there has to be new particles it has to be however they're not new particles they're just that they're not understanding that there is only one particle and it is an electron and they don't understand that it is a, a dipole not a monopole they think the electrons are monopoles and then they can't find them so now they're really confused <laughs> the electron is not a monopole it's not just a negative charge it's a negative with a positive exactly equal charges only the positive charge has no interaction with anything it's strictly an attractor. I will show you this because I've got them. I can show them absolutely. Now let's let's listen to what this guy has to say, though. See monopoles, and so far we haven't seen any. Okay, they always show a magnet with two poles. You got a positive and a negative end, and he will show this too. Now this is light. Light is nothing more than two electrons, positive and negative, positive and a negative. That's all it is. It makes it basically neutral so it doesn't destroy you like an electron does. Electrons will try to incorporate and they will fuse into you and explode you. These will bounce off of you because they're already complete. Now, I show these in extreme detail and this is the product of acceleration of light. And here is the light accelerated and that is the particle we just saw down below. And right there it separates and becomes monopoles. Prior to the Venturi, which forces it, this is what forces the wave, which is what they say is a, light is a wave or it's a particle. No, it's both. It creates a wave coming through the air, but on this type of an interaction, it displays itself as the particle that it is. The particle is with inside the wave. The wave is ahead of the ball of magnetism that the particle creates. All right, and here's what it looks like prior to the Venturi. And then it starts to hit the Venturi up ahead, and that's when you see the, the actual particle appear right there. Now, coming out of here is what they call electron showers. Now, these are the electron showers coming at us. There are these things here, and they are nothing more than raw electrons. Those are monopoles. The other part, I'll show you right now. All right, there's the interaction. The black balls were attached to the white particles. Back here, they were the little dipoles, and now they have become monopoles. The black balls are monopoles. The white is monopole showers. All right, you see them? Look. It's very, very obvious. These are the only monopoles ever seen. Okay, so my friend asked, why can't we pull the pole off of a magnet? Well, this is photons. These are photons. And what I see, and I believe you will see as well, is a dark pole and a bright pole, and a dark pole and a bright pole, which are back-to-back -back magnets. They're bar magnets. Now, nobody sees this, though. Because this is now accelerated. If you went back to before it was accelerated, back here, it's just a blurry mess. You, you can't see any real um, particles. Now you see the particles. But better than that is once they hit over here, you see this blurry mess? Well, the reason that's a blurry mess is because the poles can separate. Okay, I'm going to go over it again. Over and over and over. That is the wave coming out of the laser.
it actually is nothing more than a pulse like this with the particle in the center and the wave in front of the magnetism. You're never going to see the particle because all you're seeing is a wave. That's why I say it's a wave. Well, then all of a sudden, once it goes through the slit, they can see it as a particle for an instant. And that's what happens here. It's going through a slit. Well, we didn't make a slit. We made a venturi. And that makes it accelerate like hell. And then you can really see the particle. And then, and, and here it is right here. Here it is down below. I think I've shown this at least a few times and these are back-to-back -back dipoles that's all it is and that's what light is is a photon this is back-to-back -back dipoles and there they are bam what does bam mean bam means right there the dipoles separate and now you have monopoles coming out this way is these monopoles coming at us what are they they are electron monos. Those are monoelectronos. Now, what is the other part? The other part is that black ball. And I'll show you where that goes in a second. Now, we can see, this is a, a, another laser, but it's a, a blue, and it's spinning to the right, drifting to the left. That means it indicates it is spinning to the right. That's the right-hand rule. You can see it's compressing up here. It's expanded down there. Obviously, that is light, obviously, that is accelerating and slowing down. Obviously, it's spinning to the right. Obviously, these are dipole particles that obviously became particles shown from obviously red laser light, which is obviously some of the smallest particles that exist. We didn't use protons like CERN. CERN's smashing head-on protons and trying to find the smallest particles that exist. If they're, they're, and, they're, and they are finding them, but they don't understand what, what they're all about. I understand it because I can see them. I see them as light. But I, this one I don't understand. <laughs> that one there is a reverse spinner. It came through and it came out here like this. That, I, that's like anti-particle blah, 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 blah. All I can say about the antiparticle is that that's how it started. I believe this is the shot prior to it concussing with an electron. So it was an anti-electron or a reverse spinning electron. I don't know. It came through the slit from the red laser. It's all the same particles. And they can actually change. You see this orange and the red over here? This was being crushed. You see, it's actually being crushed, the field. So it's, it's accelerating and turning a more brilliant color than the red because it's being actually crushed after the venturi. So much to look at here. It's it's really incredible, absolutely incredible. And uh, and that particle. Now, could you force him to spin backwards? You might be able to. What, what, what would that cause? I have no idea. <laughs> I'm not sure if CERN realizes this or not. To be perfectly honest with you, but they show electron showers. They think they're all by themselves and they create showers. Yes, they do. But they are attached to the muons, which are the black balls that are seen as a well-defined nothing. They don't interact. They don't concuss. They don't explode. They don't emit. They don't absorb. They are dark matter. Dark matter attached to the white ball, which I just showed you before. Back to back, they are photons. Separated with a, with a white ball and a black ball, they are electrons. Very similar, but extremely explosive. When you have two of them back to back, they become basically neutral, and then they become bouncers. But getting back to the separation of charges, that's the monopoles. The black ones are what we would call positive. This is negative. It's negative energy, but it's shower energy. And they say electron showers and muons. They're black balls. They don't just define. These just turn into showers. There's nothing here that's not right. It's time to look at this and just not dismiss it. Oh, you can't get these pictures from a camera. Yes, you can. This is nothing more than a cell phone camera. This is no special anything here. It's very, very simple to do. It's just that if you can avoid seeing what you see, and that's what happens. The, the academics say, oh, you can't do it. I say, so, well, 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 tell me what I'm seeing. Why did I start with a red laser light? Why do I say this? Why do I see that? Why do I see this? Why do I see the interference patterns? Why do I understand exactly what I see? And you don't see any of it. That's the issue. 
All right, this goes back exactly a year ago. A new boson appears in nuclear decay breaks standard model. Well, nuclear decay, they're looking at the nuclear. I'm looking at light. It shows up in the light, my friend, much easier than showing up in the nuclear decay. Because now they're, they're still getting real confused because they're still digging through a pile of debris. I'm using light, so I started with the smallest particles, and we broke them. All right, here's the same time, exact same time, December um, of 2019. Could the standard model be wrong? Absolutely it's wrong. And, and they know it's wrong, and I'm sure they've been watching my research, because this is, all, this is the same stage the other guy's speaking from, the Royal Institute. Listen. There's still a chance, a small probability, one in a hundred, that what we're seeing could just be a fluctuation from B mesons decaying to electrons and muons at the same rate. See, electrons and muons, that's what I am showing. So in order to be absolutely sure, we're going to have to analyze more data to get that final significance. But the reason why this is so interesting and thrilling is that besides being unexpected, this could genuinely be the first sight of something new. Because if, when we've analyzed more data, this difference between muons and electrons stays... And Let me just explain something. There is a, they always thought the muons and electrons were only completely equal. And now they realize there's a problem. And the muons is the dark matter. I don't think they understand that. The electrons, I show them. I'm showing the dark matter versus the electrons, which are the muons versus the electrons. The muons being the black balls, the electrons being the showers of white. And lepton universality seems to be violated. Well, what that means is that there's something wrong with the standard model. That's it. We found the crack, finally, in our understanding of particle physics. There's absolutely no way that we can explain this observation with our current understanding. In fact, the only way we think we can explain what's going on is if there are new particles in the universe associated with new physics processes beyond those that we understand. There's not new particles. There is less particles. There's only electrons, but they're dipoles. That's all there is. A, a, a proton is 1837 of these little dipoles together. And, w and when they hit that number, it becomes stable. It becomes a fairly stable, it shakes, bzzz, the electrons buzzing back and forth between each other. And then, boop, at a certain point, they lock in. They say, okay, you stay where you are, I'll stay where I am. We're good to go at 1837, 1838 makes a neutron. And then the next time you hit another 1837 or 1838, it becomes semi-stable. However, in between there, there's a bazillion what they call isotopes. Isotopes means instead of 1837, you got 1835 or 1832 or 1820 to 8. It doesn't matter. They become more and more and more unstable as they go away from that center number. And that these new particles are interfering with the B mesons as they decay and suppressing the decay to muons compared to electrons. No. Now, if that turns out to be the case, that will truly be momentous. Forget the Higgs. This will be the first sign of physics beyond the standard model. And it's what we've built the LHC to find out. You didn't need the LHC to find out. <laughs> All you need is a, little, a couple of little devices that we use. We spent less than 500 bucks. And I think we're showing better than CERN. If you think it's, if you think it's silly, I want to know why you think it's silly. Don't just tell me I'm silly. I want to know why it's silly. How you can possibly see that light. We saw it started as light. We saw what it ended up being. We saw the particles separate. We saw the acceleration. We saw the dipoles. You know, and if you could just dis dismiss all that and say, oh, you can't catch that with, a, with a, a cell phone camera. You're just a silly guy. No, you are the silly person because you don't even take the time to look at what I'm talking about. I have other people around the world that did exactly the same thing. As a matter of fact, let me show you something, because I'll show you that the red and the green have a completely different power. Now, something I should explain to you. I didn't do these light experiments myself. I have all the things here to do it. Exactly the same stuff as Rod Warren. I worked with him for years, and but I didn't do any of the light experiments myself. He was doing such a fabulous job. So, He's the one that's going to have to explain exactly how he captured all of those early shots. A very, very, very precise, excellent, excellent um, 
pictures. I mean, just fabulous. Now, this was another guy over in France, Fabian Brule. And what he did was he put the green and the red through at the same time through the same venturi. And here's what happened with the green. Look at way out here. That's how powerful the green is. The red's completely absorbed here. Now, what happened as they both came through? That's the green, that's the red. Well, the green is so energetic that it pushed the red away from its laser down. This is the light that would have been here. These are particles. Now, these particles are red particles because they're spinning at the speed of redness. <laughs> these are green particles that are spinning at the speed of greenness. Now, are they moving faster? I'm not sure. I don't know. But I can see this is actually literally turning the red into the green as the green overcomes it. And, and pushing the red away. you got a couple of little red particles up in here. But they are completely different, separate particles. And then they separate from the black to the white. So he captured the same thing, but Rod, Rod is just... Rod is the first one. Rod came up with the Venturi. I'm not stepping on his territory. You want to know about how he captured the special, fabulous shots? You have to talk to Rod. And that's a hard thing to do, man. I've been working with him for years. I don't think I've, we've had ten words between the two of us. He just sends me the pictures. I analyze them, and we go through them. You know, I mean, I go through them, basically. And, um, you know, he's got other interests in this light. Uh, for me, it's strictly the... Um, interaction of the particles. For him, he's looking for other things which are incorporated in the light, which relate to life. And I'm not, I'm not against that at all. They, I'm telling you, the things he's coming up with are very, very impressive, but they are so far away from the mainstream as mine has always been, but mine now is coming around to the mainstream. Um, that they, they, nobody will even consider anything he does at this point, but that's going to change.